Hello and welcome to the Adbar Hazy Centre near Dulles Airport near Washington DC. Now it's been quite a while since I've done a flight review because I've been focusing mostly on aviation museums but today's flight is going to be a special one as it's on board the Queen of the Skies, the Boeing 747. I'm going to be flying with Lufthansa over to Frankfurt. Now don't worry, I will be doing a separate video where I'm going to tour around this incredible museum and show you more here. But otherwise, uh, sit back and enjoy the trip as I fly over to Germany. Dulles International Airport is massive and different airlines depart from different terminals. Therefore, you'll need to know this before you leave home. Uber actually knows, so it'll direct you if you just enter your airline. Walking through the doors and immediately you're facing Lufthansa's first class check-in desk straight ahead and business class is just a few meters across. It could not have been any easier and I was able to check in around 4 hours before my flight because there was another Lufthansa flight departing just before my aircraft arrived. We jumped onto an underground train which takes us to the departure terminal. Lufthansa have two lounges here with a business class lounge and a Senator lounge for first class passengers and Star Alliance Gold members. Business is down these stairs and was pretty crowded. There's an okay selection of hot and cold food as well as a bar with drinks. Now the drinks are complimentary although there was someone serving and I'm not sure if we were expected to tip them since this is the United States. The view of the tarmac, always a highlight for me, wasn't great so I went for a wander. Here's the previous flight, an Airbus A340. Lufthansa have an incredibly diverse fleet of aircraft, which makes their home port, Frankfurt, an amazing place for plane spotters. Barely any other airlines fly either the A340 or the 747-8 that you'll see shortly, so kudos to Lufthansa. This is the new Lufthansa livery, which I think looks great. Some people complain that it's a little plain, but I think it's very classy and understated. And here's my aircraft arriving. For comparison's sake, this is the old livery. And I'd love to hear your thoughts about which paint scheme you prefer in the comments below. I don't know about you, but I reckon the Dash 8 version of the 747 was the perfection of the 747 shape. The winglets on the 400 series, whilst functional, wrecked the classical lines of the wings. One of the major changes were the new wings, which were much sleeker and aerodynamic. Other changes included the longer upper deck, which we'll explore shortly, and the new engines. Now I'm actually filming this from the Turkish Airlines lounge, which is near Lufthansa's, and business class passengers are allowed in there as well. It has some different food and a little more space, so if you do arrive and find Lufthansa full, and or prefer better abgeek views, then head to the Turkish lounge. But I did head back to Lufthansa for the boarding process, which happens directly from the lounge, which is impressive at any airport, let alone not their home airport. Here she is, once again, named Potsdam after the city in northeast Germany. Now I know this sounds obvious, but I'm always amazed at how large this aircraft is. We think of 787s and A350s as big aircraft, and they are, but this is just a whole new level of largeness. Here we are entering the main business class cabin, where the seats are in three pairs across. It's a fairly dense setup and a fairly old design, although in their defense they have announced that the seats are getting replaced soon, which is great news. But I kept on walking as I was heading to the upstairs. Earlier 747s had spiral staircases, but they've had these straight ones for the last few decades. Then I spun around and my seat 88 kilo was on the right. I intentionally selected the last row to get a good view out of the window and to avoid it disturbing others as I filmed. It really was exciting to fly on board the Queen of the Skies once again, especially as no passenger versions fly to Australia at all. A pre-departure drink was offered and shortly afterwards it was time to back out. Now I'll show you around this seat shortly as I know the Abgeeks watching are we're all hanging out to hear the spool up, which is fair enough as it was pretty epic. Quickly here's the Amanta kit which comes in this weird supermarket bag. It has the usual goodies although I should mention that eye masks and mouthwash and earplugs are all available in the bathrooms and on multiple of my flights they were all very well stocked. 
while the cabin downstairs is surprisingly wide. Up here, the seats are in a 2-2 layout and it feels much like a smaller plane. In fact, the upstairs section is larger than the original 737. I'll stop talking and let you enjoy the four General Electric Gen X turbofans, explode fuel into music and 66,500 pounds of thrust each. Our flight was delayed by around 60 minutes, therefore we took off and almost immediately the sun set. We would be flying against the sun so even though it was just a 7 hour flight, we would be experiencing both this sunset and sunrise as well. There was a warm towel brought around and the cabin lighting was set to sunset colours. The dinner service began and to start I went with a black pepper crusted duck breast, potato salad with white truffle oil, boiled quail egg and capybara. This was washed down with some sparkling water because I'm having a one third life crisis and trying to get healthy. For the main I went with a pan seared salmon fillet with ginger glaze, spiced eggplant, blanched guy lan, and jasmine rice. For dessert, I had some cheese and grapes and some grape juice. These were followed by some chocolate. Then I sat back and enjoyed the incredible sunset. The view from around 40,000 feet really is magical and we're really fortunate to experience it. There are three bathrooms upstairs and I never had to wait. As I said earlier, they were all well stocked with amenities and it's probably actually good for the environment, having less in the amenity kits themselves as I'm sure people just don't use a lot of it. But then passengers can collect the stuff in here if they're actually going to Now use you it. can't really see it on the camera, but the toilet paper was the thickest and lushest I've ever experienced on a plane. Usually it's that thin horrible stuff, so maybe Germans really appreciate good soft toilet paper and so do I. So good job to Lufthansa. I put the seat in flat mode and had a short nap before waking and having an espresso, which was pretty decent for on board a plane. Just west of Ireland, passengers started waking and the crew bought around our breakfast. There was only one option and it was a coconut cheer pudding with stewed strawberry and rhubarb with almond slices. I was surprised by the lack of options but there is an arrival lounge which we were told about and encouraged to visit. I didn't visit it myself because I was connecting to another flight. Then I again sat back and enjoyed the sound and light show outside of my window. I only ever watch the sunrise when I'm flying because, to be honest, I don't have the personal discipline to ever get up early if it's not for a flight, but it's always a great experience. 70 years ago, only the mega wealthy could fly and that would have been in a rickety DC-3, but now it's much more accessible. By the way, did you know that flight attendants were initially registered nurses because motion sickness was so severe in older aircraft that the passengers would all be puking up and potentially need medical assistance? Thankfully now with pressurised aircraft, we fly at a much higher altitude, hence a smoother ride and no puking. A slight tangent, but on the topic of the magic of flight, check out this footage of Greenland I captured from a Lufthansa A330 a few days after this flight. There's something magisterial about seeing this extremely remote landscape thousands of kilometres from human interference. It really looks like another planet.
As we descend, I'll mention the seat in a little more detail. They're all positioned in pairs, so there's minimal privacy. Ahead of you is this TV screen, which is adequate, and below that is a storage spot for your water bottle and anything else you might want to accidentally leave on board. There's a ledge where your feet go, and a barrier to stop footsies with a neighbour next to you. It's pretty tight to be honest, and there's a storage space underneath. Under your arm is a USB port, the in-flight entertainment controls, and a fold-out table. There's buttons for the seat controls and a ledge for drinks. Down near your ankles were two universal power points to share with your neighbour. Although the best part of the upper deck in both this and the A380 are these massive storage holds where you could literally fit in a person. The provided headphones work well and are properly noise cancelling, unlike some other airlines which are just large basic headphones. I wouldn't mind if they were a little larger though to properly cover my big ears. The in-flight entertainment has reasonable content, although the system was laggy and I noticed others having problems and needing to be reset. I didn't have a neighbour this flight, although on my A330 flight back I did, and when the seat is flat it remains fairly high, so it's actually pretty difficult to step over them. By this time, we were well and truly descending down into Frankfurt International Airport, although the amazing views didn't stop. This flight really did provide some of my favourite in-flight views, and I'm really grateful that I snagged a window seat. And I'm sure Lufthansa aren't listening, but I can say that on behalf of Av Geeks everywhere, thank you for buying the passenger version of the 747-8. Only three airlines have, Korean, Air China, and Lufthansa. And interestingly, not a single American airline bought these, although two are currently being converted into VC-25Bs for the Air Force, which will be used as the next Air Force One. You may know the story, but Boeing knew that Airbus were bringing out the A380, and they were looking at an all-new replacement for the 747. In the end, the bean counters reduced the investment and only allowed for them to upgrade the 747 rather than building something brand new. And considering that the market is now moving towards big twins and point-to-point -point flights, and the A380 production has ceased never going anywhere near the expected sale targets, Boeing probably made the right decision. Thankfully Lufthansa will continue flying these for another 10 years, and have recently committed to refurbishing the whole interiors as I mentioned earlier. So how was this flight specifically? I really enjoyed it. Yes, in every measurement the seat itself is inferior to other business class seats, and I'm relieved to know they're replacing them soon. Otherwise, the crew were great and the food I thought was perfectly fine and in adequate amounts for a 6-7 hour flight. I'd bring extra movies on my laptop though. It's possibly entirely in my mind, and probably down to luck, although I'm sure that the 747s have less turbulence. You can feel the flexing in the airframe, which maybe is what contributes to it feeling less turbulent, although I'm just thinking out loud. Even the rotation process itself was smooth and graceful. The great views continued as we landed with Frankfurt's skyline in the background, and another aircraft landing on a distant parallel runway. Now here's a challenge for keen app geeks, can you tell what aircraft it is? Comment below. And check out the condensation forming above the wings, it really was a cool sight. It's always interesting, well for us abgeeks, watching the engineering dance immediately after landing as the spoilers raise, thrust reverses activate and the leading edge flaps retract. Sometimes you hear a nice spool up again, although this runway must have been long enough that they didn't need to. And if you're wondering why the leading edge flaps do retract just after touchdown, and that's to avoid the airflow from the reverse thrust blowing straight up into them and damaging them. If you enjoyed the video, then please click the thumbs up icon and check out my channel for many other videos. Watch me crawl from the luggage hold to the cockpit of a 747-200 Classic and also a 747-400 and join me on board the last ever commercial Qantas 747 flight. Thanks for watching and here are the menus.